Welcome back to Little Stingers, baby. We're just discussing side bitches that also own hot dog restaurants. Ooh. We're all accepting applications. <laughs> A little plump in the clump. I'm Michael Fuckerini <laughs> here with Jean-Benet Del Calo. Hey. I think Jake's having a tough time over there. Yeah, please. No, he's got to figure yeah, it out. said yeah. plump in the crump. <laughs> Jacob from Matera. Hello. Danny Dubs. Man, hot dogs just. John Del Calo, Jake Matera. No one knows our fucking names. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? That's Mike. I'm John. <laughs> That's Jake. Yeah. Matera. I'm John Del Calo. Welcome just to two, Hot Dog Talk. <laughs> hot Dog Talk. <laughs> two wholesome Italian boys. And rain train. First order of business, what's going between your buns? <laughs> uh, Jake and I have a glut of riches right now because two, count on two, new hot dog joints opened up in our neighborhood. And you thought we were going to die of heart attacks this summer? <laughs> it's looking like spring, yeah. bitch. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> looking like I don't have to pay taxes again. <laughs> Dude, I would love to hunt a hot dog place. That would just be an unfortunate place to be stuck for eternity to haunt. For if you who? smell it and you can't eat, can you eat yeah. as a haunter? Slimer did. Can you eat honkers as a haunter? <laughs> <laughs> Sucking down honker dogs. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, but uh, remember uh, you're right. Slimer can, so that's that's canon now. Yeah, go through them though. We've all yeah, seen, still taste them. Yeah, okay. we've all seen the video of Slimer sucking down all that food. Yeah, one time uh, Tommy Pope showed us a video of him eating pussy and Tim said he looks like slime red at the hotel card. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> oh man. Just flipping through the channels. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How are you guys? <laughs> I'm good. I'm a little bit confused at the moment because of the information you just shared. Nobody sends me videos of them eating pussy and I f I'm afraid that I'd I've been doing life wrong now. <laughs> well, become better friends with Tommy. <laughs> That's my only option? Dude, yeah. Is that the only guy I know that eats pussy on camera? Well, he's probably the only guy that films himself eating pussy. <laughs> okay. You gotta, you gotta practice technique, you know? You gotta, it's game footage. Jake, eat that microphone. This is too, uh, no. Too <laughs> wet? Yeah, too wet. Mm. Well, sounded like you were stirring some macaroni, so <laughs> I wiggled it a little bit. <laughs> All right, macaroni talk, baby. Are you ready to flip that coin, John? Yes. Because yeah. I have a guy that I really want to talk about tonight, and I really hope we get to talk about him. I hope we talk about hot dogs. Hot dog jokers. Fuck. We're talking about your guy. All right, we're back, Jake. Murder, murder. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. Is it a murderer? He's a real bad murderer. Oh, fuck. You were right. <laughs> Sometimes it's not. Like once yeah. every... 50 or something. He's very handsome. Well, he's very handsome, I guess, for where he's from, so it's hard to stay mad at him. Where's he from? Ugly town? <laughs> he's from <laughs> Hamilton, Ohio. All right. I mean, yeah. His name's Glenn Edward Rogers, known as the Cross Country Killer, also known as the Casanova Killer, Jake. Wow. wow. Had a way with the ladies. Now, I could see how ladies could fall for him. He did have beautiful eyes. He does. He's, he's still among us. There you go, John. He's still among us these yeah. days. Mm -hmm. These days. He is, John. These days. Yeah. You think because I have beautiful eyes that you could be a, a I could also murder women. A sick murderer. Dude. I think you could Thanks. find them. Mm -hmm. I think you'd have no problem getting ladies if I'd you were on the market. Do a lot of uh, shoulder up Tinder shots. <laughs> nah. <laughs> or have a very straight on. <laughs> I'm a I'm a thick boy when you when I turn to the side. You know, some people turn inside and they're like yeah. paper. I turn inside mm -hmm. and I'm fucking pregnant. Look like a goddamn bell. Buddy. Yeah. Walking by buildings. Not see next window. to me, pal. Brother, you look like Alfred Fatcock. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> it's not all venom coming out of me, directed at you. That was very nice. That was nice. Yeah. <laughs> all right, yeah, I guess you could say something nice about me right now, but. <laughs> uh, yeah, give me a minute. Mike, such a nice fella with the big old smelly balls. Wait, hang on. That's not <laughs> nice. Uh, Mike, the guy's the guy so smooth he never wipes his head. <laughs> All right, well, you figure this out. I yeah. want to say something nice. Jake, uh, when we were talking about old people earlier, I think you're going to make a great old man. You, oh, dude, you that's very kind of you. You will. You're you're gonna anybody that comes in there to do karate to entertain you, <clears throat> you're gonna yeah. clap for them, you're gonna 
tell them, man, I can't believe you got up that high. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would encourage it. You're you're gonna be like you're so adulthood. strong. You're in there. You're gonna be. You like, ever think of growing a ponytail? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. ponytails are funny. I yeah. used to be a comedian back in the day. Where are you going? A real comedy pig. I <laughs> Where <was>. are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would encourage, but dude, I mean, the only time you're gonna see me be an old man is with those those filters on Instagram. <laughs> Come on now. No, you'll look pretty shitty at fifty five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you think so, dude? That's a that's. You'll look you. old Thanks, early. Man. You'll look old early. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna look bad soon. Very soon. <laughs> I'm at the I'm at peak right now. Yeah, you're but, beautiful. Uh, yeah, you, you do look great. Yeah, you do look great, and yeah. you get a lot of compliments on uh, on do this here show. You do, man. Thank you, guys. Yeah, you got the whole people, package. A lot of people compliment you. They say, "Look at Jakey." Yeah, yeah. You, you look got, at Jakey. The, those looks, that outfit. You look like an urban cabbage patch kid. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a cabbage yeah. patch kid that is now the manager. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like a cabbage patch man. It has my yeah. description on the back. Like, what if your cabbage patch kid got into? They might be giants. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't listen to They Might Be Giants, but sound like... You think that's the uniform for their fans? I Probably, right? Jake, you've also reminded Vampire me... Weekend. <laughs> you've also reminded me of a Campbell Soup Kid. Okay. You do have that, that sweet face and those beautiful eyes. Yeah, there's an innocence about me that I can't shake. I've tried. Shake it right now. And I'm not talking always. about your face. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see everything else shake. I, I ain't fanatic in front of either of you boys right now. You got to come to a game... <laughs> I'm only I'm only looking for the fanatic tongue out of you. That thing's long and in charge. Well, thank you. <laughs> and Mike, you are devilishly handsome. Oh, you're very sweet. Thank you for a minute. Ah, oh, yeah, there you go. Thank that's, you. That's what I was gonna say. Well, you should have. <laughs> Damn, dude. All right. So our dear friend Glenn Edward Rogers, it, pretty eyes. I'll say that about him. The rest of them looks like a a. He, I said, you look like a Cabbage Patch Kid. He looks like a goddamn Garbage Pail Kid, as far as I'm Damn. concerned. Damn. Wait, the Casanova thing wasn't because he was handsome? Dude, I, he's he was, got beautiful eyes. I'll give him that. You, you know, <laughs> that was great, Jake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this fucking monster. <laughs> yeah. But he's he's got the head of a woman who <laughs> lives no. in urban housing. Stop it. I don't know what else to say right now, Jake. I don't like his head. Are you saying I will he's say like that. A, is he like a reverse Steve Buscemi? In what no. sense? Listen, I don't know. I it's think Steve beautiful. Buscemi's handsome. I think he is too. And but people always make fun of his eyes. No, I think he, like there's a whole well, website devoted to it or Tumblr. Remember that thing back in the day? And they would take his eyes and put them on other celebrities. Like Casanova would probably be the opposite of that. Then right? I'll say this about him: he looks like a lady that has. Marital, ankle, and financial trouble. Okay. All right. So I hope that paints a better just picture. Just described me right there, Mike. No. <laughs> this this dude looks like a lady, mm -hmm. but he's got good eyes. Man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. All right. One it's of these days, I'm gonna look up the images of these people at the beginning of the episode, <laughs> so I have any kind. of I never picture. know. Yeah. We never know. I should. And you we'll know Never know. One thing that I thought about doing, and I think I'm gonna do this. I should hand each of you a dossier. Mm, I think if we just had, I'm just gonna bring a laptop and we can watch porn at while it. I tell you about serial killers. <laughs> <laughs> you guys gonna Mike, eat, eat your shit your butt? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he killed another one. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Could you turn the fucking camera off? I'm gonna come. <laughs> so our friend Glenn Edward Rogers, the Casanova killer, his parents were named Claude and Edna. What do you think about those names, Jake? Edna sounds a little old and ugly, but Claude sounds a little smooth. Claude does sound nice. Not many Claudes mm. these days. I like a one-syllable name. Yeah. I, I worked... All right, so when, when I started working in education, a kid that I was a one one eight for, he called himself Andrew, and it took me a while to find out that his real name is Claude. And one of the teachers who he had loved the name Claude so much that he would only refer to him as Claude. Did that get the ball rolling on him being caught clawed full time? No, he stuck with Andrew. I don't and know. Maybe <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe you grow into that later in life. It's a very cool, strong name. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. you kill a hooker in a blackout rage. <laughs> you got to change your name. You go with your middle name, Claude, mm -hmm. and then you're caught immediately because it's your middle name. You fucking yeah. idiot. <laughs> Edna was not as nice as Claude. 
Ah. Edna was fucking beating his ass. As a baby, she knocked out Glenn. Whoa. Knocked his ass out, Jake. Like with a fucking fist? <laughs> a punch to the baby face? I don't know if it was a punch, but I can't imagine it takes a lot to knock a baby out. Yeah. yeah. Little baby knockout game. <laughs> Just <like that>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jake, so, pretend I'm a baby. Oh, man. Choke me out. Boop. I need to be changed first. <laughs> I knew it stunk in here. Oh, get this. I knew I called your taint smelly for a reason. Get this. One of the things that he and his buddies would do for fun during his childhood was to play at an abandoned chemical plant in their neighborhood. Oh, no. Mm hmm. <laughs> Sounds like fun, though, don't it? It does. Yeah, a bunch of swamp things. Mm hmm. <laughs> Now, in this book, uh, the author that I mentioned in the previous episode, Clifford Leindecker, he wrote a book called Smooth Operator about Glenn Edward Rogers, Inside the Mind of a Killer. Smooth Operator. Smooth and, brand operator. <laughs> and in this book, he talks about the chemical plant, and he mentions that there were just like puddles of unknown substances all around the property, and they would splash in these puddles. Oh, yes, yeah, dude. So naturally... And walk home and bring it inside. Brother, naturally, he started to enjoy chewing paint off the walls of his home. <laughs> <laughs> and this had this had to have been around like lead paint time. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Oh man. man. Yeah, this is the sixties, baby. Whew. Yeah, it was definitely lead paint. Time. I'm a lead head, baby. <laughs> 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 so he's he's chewing paint off the walls, not like taking it out of the paint container. Yeah, bro. I, I remember that shit. You peel a chip off, you take a bite. You complain that your tummy hurts, but it tastes so good, you eat another one. Mm. And you keep <laughs> eating, so you have lead head. <laughs> what is what is your chemical of choice? Dude. I, Nitrous oxide. Jake? I, fuck, I I think it's just huffing the dryer. What's that, carbon monoxide? That's what I that is. I don't know if that's chemical. Those are elements. Danny, you got a chemical of choice? I really love gasoline. I know, dude. The smell of it? Yeah. Or the taste mm -hmm. of it? <laughs> a little bit of both. <laughs> Diesel, if I'm tasting. Take some, take some gummies. Dude. <laughs> I'm, but, but yeah, this motherfucker was chewing paint off the wall. Jake, were you about to Are you struggling over I'm, here? Yeah, I'm, I'm about I'm, what? I'm upset because I, I, I feel like I re reap all the rewards of someone who ate lead paint. <laughs> but I never did, man. I never got to enjoy it. Maybe I, sh maybe if I Try eat it. lead paint, maybe it'll write the course. It will. I didn't really eat it, but I would pe peel it off the wall and do what with it? What you do? eat it? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I ate it all, Jake. Yeah, I knew you ate that. I ate a whole yeah. fucking room. Uh, <laughs> when I was an altar boy, I ate the whole rectory. Even the booger wall? <laughs> Ew, dude. <laughs> so naturally, this motherfucker is eating paint off the walls. He develops a weird tick. What do you think that weird tick is? Um, growing an extra <laughs> limb. Getting hard around paint stores. <laughs> <laughs> he starts smashing his head against the wall. Oh, uh, boy. And he tells... Gotta get that headache to go away somehow <laughs> from eating all that lead paint. Yeah, is that from the paint or from his mom knocking him out as a baby? His mom starts busting his balls about it, and Who's he says, that? that's just how I go to sleep. <laughs> Some people count sheep. I like to... <laughs> I have to knock myself out. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't stop pissing the bed until he's 12. Which, ironically, is the time where he starts drinking. Imagine that. Oh my God. When you're supposed to start pissing the bed again. Yeah, I think I started pissing the bed again at 34. <laughs> <laughs> so he finds out that uh, around this time where he starts drinking and he's a child, he starts committing burglaries with his brother Clay, who's a little bad boy his damn self. Unfortunately, Jake, something, uh, something sickening happens to our dear friend Glenn during his teenage years. What do you think happens? I mean, if it wasn't the eating paint chips, um, was he abused, Mike? Yeah, his mom fucking knocked him out, dude. <laughs> uh, Aside from that, yeah. like, no, he was treated okay. like a child prince. Okay. Do you want me to just tell you? Yes, please just tell me. Yeah, most of the time we want you to just tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He found pictures of his mom doing bad stuff. Oh, no. Yeah. But with, with, a, with a fella? Well, his dad had a stroke, and the mom started porking around town. Ooh. And taking boudoir photos. Mm -hmm. mm, I wouldn't like to stumble on that shoebox. I'm going to tell you a little something about myself. I oh, made no. the mistake of going through my parents' bedroom drawers one day when I was a child. Mm -hmm. What would you find? My mother was stockpiling dildos like she was doomsday prepping. Jesus. 
<laughs> it's like that fucking like the the weapons of mass destruction. You take off the box and there's giant fucking. There's not even a not <laughs> like those drawers and nightside tables, bedside tables aren't even that big. Yeah. Was it filled well, with rim? <laughs> <laughs> there was dude, I, there was one that was God just, bless her in the eighties. This are is these amazing. Candelabras, <laughs> dude. There was one that it was just massive, and it had to be a gag. God damn it! It couldn't have been functional. You're fucking yeah, walking around I, the house. I keep though. all my gags right next to my bed. <laughs> <laughs> she did have chattering teeth in there. <laughs> Mike's going around the house with it singing be our guest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but my bedside table is just yo-yos, blackjacks. <laughs> Wait, Jack, tic-tac-toe games. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's what I got for looking in those drawers. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> go ahead, Jake. Did you ever do it? Did you ever look through your parents' drawers? Yeah. Yeah. Just but some respectable... Catholic condoms is all I ever found. What? Whoa. You found condoms? Mm -hmm. Dude, I yeah. looked a couple of times, Would and I find. never found anything. Oh, my God. But I was too dumb to find it. Probably the second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just one drawer, you're like, I didn't find anything. <laughs> yeah, just furry handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom was Y2K and dildos, and my dad just had cummed on pornography. On his side? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, they were yeah, freaky. Why 2K dildos? They're freaky as hell, Mike. As a result of Glenn finding these pictures of his mom as a teenage boy, he tries to kill himself by taking 25 Motrin. That'll fuck up your liver. Jesus Christ. Not How old was though. he when he did this? Probably 14. My god. Fortunately hey, for him. It ain't the end of the world, pal. When he your turned, mom's a slut. I You'll mean, get over it. If you ever needed an opportunity <laughs> oh, no, to bash won't. your head against a wall... <laughs> It would be finding that shoe box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, the reason he didn't die is because 21 Motrin is what his fucking <laughs> headache needed after all those goddamn bangs. <laughs> all right, when he's 15, he falls in love with a 13-year-old girl who is uh, also a prostitute. What? Jake, this is a fucked up place they live in. Dude. Yep. This is Ohio? Yep. I don't think you're Hamilton, Dalton. Ohio. I think they call it Hamiltucky, the... The area he's from. Okay. Man, poor Kentucky. Everyone puts Kentucky yeah. on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put some Tucky on it. <laughs> <laughs> so ninth grade, uh, he's expelled. He gets expelled from two separate schools in ninth grade, so he doesn't advance any further than that. When he turns 18, he finds out that his mom's been cheating on his bedridden dad, so he beats one of his mom's lovers with a baseball bat at a bar. Wait. So the pictures then were with the dad, or he didn't know whose dick was in the picture? When I see the pictures, I will tell you. Okay. I don't know, though, Jake. Yeah. I imagine it was somebody else, and I imagine that's probably why he wanted to kill himself, more so than just seeing his mom's hoo-ha. So then it just got, he's kind of reliving it again. It's just Tommy Pope in the thing. <laughs> <laughs> his mom accidentally texted him the video. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, imagine that. You're just chilling at the bar, and this, this beautiful-eyed mongoloid comes in to just beat a guy to death. Mm. He didn't beat him to death. He just beat him with a bat. So in 1979, his beloved Debbie gives birth to a child that's not his. It's the child of one of the Johns she was with. Whoa. Yeah. So she's only 15 when she gives birth. Jesus Christ. Yeah, man. Right. Very fucked up. What's but, he doing with that baseball bat? Jake, this is a child. I'm asking. <laughs> what? This is a child. You pervert. You want to go for a walk? Yeah, I, I could use a walk. All right, take the dog out. <laughs> <laughs> but they get married the next year. So she is a child bride, which are two words that you never want to put together. And yet you do it every week. Only because Jake likes it. <laughs> <laughs> you heard him. He acted like goddamn cherry on Pee Wee's Playhouse when I just said she was a 13-year-old yeah. prostitute. <laughs> What part of Ohio was this specifically? <laughs> How many hours does it take to drive there if you leave right now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in 1981, Glenn and uh, Debbie, they have a son of their own. They name him Jean-Claude. Cool. Not because of the reason you think. Not because of the dad's middle name? All right. It is the reason you think. <laughs> <laughs> Were you thinking it was because of his interest in kickboxing? Yes. But unfortunately, being married to Glenn was, in fact, a blood sport because he was very abusive. Oh, man. Glad you got that one in there. <laughs> it was very fucked up. Glad Dude. you wrote that one last night. Yeah. <laughs> I did not. In a notebook just next to Kamate. <laughs> 
Dude, this was such a fucked up. He was abusive to so many women throughout his life, but it yeah. started with her. And unfortunately, um, this woman who now has his children and another of her own with somebody else has to endure beatings for, for no other reason than just doing something that annoyed him. On top of that, too, this fucker had the name Debbie, D-E-B-I, written on his fucking fist. Like written or tattooed? A tattooed, I'm okay. sorry. Okay, wow. He wrote it every day? Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just get wash the blood off and then rewrote it every day. I'm thinking about getting your names tattooed on my both my fists. You don't need to do that, Mike. Put Jake here and John with two ends over here. If you get a prostitute pregnant, are you on the hook? No, she should be getting the hook. Jesus, Mike. And by the hook, he means a uh, a <laughs> hanger, like a coat hanger, wire, no, wire coat don't, hanger. No, don't. To be performed in some kind of Stop it. motor coach hotel. Oh, God. Roadside piece of shit motel. Don't say that. Some, probably somewhere up on the Roosevelt Boulevard. Oh, right here. John, you kind of look like an abortion doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm stepping up. Last time you said I look like a turtle doctor. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hold you in yeah. high regard. I guess the denim shirt really <laughs> does a, a world of difference. <laughs> I'm out of the animal world. Five stars on Craigslist. Uh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Yowzer. But uh, uh, this is, I thought this was kind of a nice element to this story. He moves from Ohio to Pasadena, California for a job. Whoa. God damn. Beautiful place. Coming I love up. Pasadena. Yeah. Yeah, Pasadena is fucking awesome. That's one of my favorite places in California. Great view of the mountains. Mm. Is that because you saw me in the shower? And, and, and what else? Because I wash my asshole by grabbing my ankles. <laughs> he and, does. And he, do, he do do that. And that's Mount Rainy? That's, and that's when, I, that's when I mounted Rainy. Turning you into Mount Gushmore. <laughs> We're not going to share a room in the future. Oh, man. <laughs> that's all right, because I love sharing one with Jake. We shared so much, man. We were we were so close after that. After you guys shared a room? Yeah. He was after so you guys fun. shared a CPAP machine? Yeah. I Did didn't he... have it then. Yeah. Was he a loud snorer at the time then? No. I just remember, like, I, he spiked a coffee into the fucking sink. Why'd you do that? I dumped it into the sink. Dude, there was fucking coffee everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. But I know how strong he is, so I know he can't control himself. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it wasn't piss. <laughs> it wasn't piss, Mike. <laughs> All right. But yeah, I, I would room with him any day of the week. Tonight. I'll do it. Jake, what are you doing later? Why are you By saying the like airport. it's a dare? He's like, <laughs> do it tonight in the Ben Salem Hotel, <laughs> the casino hotel. So, our dear friend Glenn, he brings them out to Pasadena. And unfortunately, it doesn't work out, so he breaks up with his child bride, and he ends up falling in love again. Damn, brought her to Pasadena and then dumped her? Yep. He falls in love again with a lady named Catherine Capoyan. Hmm. Catherine Capoyan. They have a child together. Damn. Damn. Yeah, he's, he's spreading that seed, baby. Moving on. Yeah, he was Pasadena mm -hmm. with the first one. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to go walk the dog. I'll see you guys in a couple minutes, like you said. Now, in 1986, he's hospitalized for a very funny reason. All right, he's hanging out at places called the Choo Choo and the Right Spot Cafe. Love it. Hell I know, that does sound like very cool places where I'd want to <laughs> abandon my family. <laughs> but unfortunately, he likes to drink, and he takes a little bit too far. He goes to the hospital for injecting Budweiser into his veins. Oh, that's He injected? He did. Ooh. Yep. You're not going to want that yeast in there, pal. So naturally, he ends up stacking up a bunch of public intoxication arrests. <laughs> you got any of those? I don't, know. I don't know how I avoided ever getting arrested. I feel like I spent 10 years in handcuffs. I've been handcuffed a few times. You but... give off cop vibes. I think that's what it is. Okay. Him? Let's see you. You're like, oh, he's off duty. Maybe. He's clearly been through some shit. I, well. He fired his service weapon. And I, I know how to out. be a good boy. I don't think I've ever argued with a cop, so I think that's gotten me out of trouble a few times. Well, you only do it once, really. <laughs> <laughs> they, they teach you a lesson pretty good. <laughs> And then you're pretty respectful anytime you get a handcuffed after that. Yeah. I've only abandoned my vehicle once and just like ran. Avoiding a Dewey, baby. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. How long has it been? It's been, uh, no, I didn't fucking do this. I'm just, I don't I know why. I was trying you're to get you out of it. You yeah, can like 20 you. years. 25 years. What's the statute? Ah, they can still get you. It's 26. Ah, fucking idiot. <laughs> I'm going to wait for the cops to come. <laughs> <laughs> When's this episode come out? Three weeks from now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's quite the little singer too. When he does, uh, when he he sings at bars, and instead of saying "All my exes live in Texas," he says "All my exes live in Ohio." Pretty good. That'll like get you it. some pussy, man. 
He's like the uh, the original Weird Al. That's very specific in Pasadena, though. They're like, all right, okay. Yeah, doesn't uh-huh. rhyme, but <laughs> yeah. To help keep himself out of trouble, he becomes a confidential informant. Ooh, a little CI action, little, little rat, Whoa. little rat, rat boy. He's a little rat. Who wants a cheese? Hope he don't get. I do. Hope he don't get caught up in that fucking uh, Planet Fitness where they got six nine, dude. Oh, uh, they beat no. that little fucking rat's ass. They man. got him at Planet Fitness. Uh, LA, LA Fitness. Fitness. Oh, okay. Yeah, at first I thought it was Planet Fitness. I was like, damn. Man, damn, they should have great. I should have sounded the lung alarm on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his lungs got his ass, dude. If he was out Planet Fitness, he would have been safe yeah. because those lungs wouldn't have been there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to stay where the lungs aren't if you're a fucking rat. <laughs> they beat the fuck out of him, yeah. dude, on camera, too. Well, that's what he gets for wearing a fucking bubble jacket on the goddamn Stairmaster. <laughs> I mean, that's what he gets for ratting, mm-hmm. but those guys are idiots. Right. For chasing clout, they're going to get fucking arrested for they will get beating an FBI informant. Yeah, they, wait, did this just happen? Last week, maybe. Oh, shit. Where you been, dude? You, I know, just, you don't... I've you don't Google my... six nine any every I... day anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, six nine rainbow six six nine <laughs> six nine LA fitness <laughs> bathroom. <laughs> Man, you you gotta change your Google alerts, dude. <laughs> so he gets his ass beat with a baseball bat for being a snitch because a couple of people that he ends up ratting on find out that he's a confidential informant. Damn, you gotta not let that happen. He gets his ass beat so bad that he joins the circus, Jake. <laughs> I, before shit. you talk, I think you're about to say, have you ever gotten your ass beat so bad that you joined the circus? <laughs> but he would have done it with a straight face. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, these guys weren't clowning around. <laughs> they beat his ass into the circus. <coughs> Damn. That's fucking funny. Yeah, what yeah. decade is this at this point? This is the late 80s. Dude, like, it's not a runaway and join the circus time anymore. <laughs> but he's a runaway and join the circus kind of guy. <laughs> so from 1989 to 1993, he was a part of a traveling circus, Jake. Wow. That's incredible. What was he doing in the circus? A million different jobs. Yeah? Yep. A jack off of all trades. <laughs> mm-hmm. What would you do at the circus? Probably just shovel shit all day. Mm. You know? <laughs> I gotta, I gotta know Jesus. my worth, and I found it. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Think higher of yourself, yeah. man. I could do it. You could be the guy who holds the bag that the shit gets. <laughs> oh into. man! Now in 1991, he accidentally commits his first killing. A fellow carney allows him to inject whiskey into his veins. Oh my God! He's taking his experiment to the. Whoa. Well, dude, he does that, and in the same year, he injects Budweiser into his own veins once again. The Carney died the that second night. time. The Carney died that day, and Which he got away with it. Was, I mean, yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah. The guy let him do it. <laughs> You'd be a good lawyer. Come, I mean, he let it do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is the wrong courtroom. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is the wrong state? <laughs> oh, my fucking God. What? How did I even they go move, to law school? They move around so much, I can't keep track. <laughs> Now, in 1992, it's his first intentional death. Uh, he kills a hooker while he's a part of the circus, Jake. What's he doing to her? Injecting her? Oh, buddy. Oh, no. Not the same kind of injection I'm imagining. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little, little beep injection. Damn. You say beat injection? Hot beef injection, Oh, he beef. Said. Oof. Yeah, ever heard of it? You got two kids. You yeah. should know about it. <laughs> 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 you used to work at Wendy's. You should know about it. <laughs> Oh, man. I love on, on com- fast food commercials when they say smothered. <laughs> you and me both. That shit gets my mouth watered. <laughs> Even on news stories when they say smothered, it gets my mouth watered. <laughs> mm, where's the closest Waffle House? <laughs> <laughs> Grandmother smothered today in nursing home. Smothered in her own bedroom. <laughs> Anybody want to go to Denny's? Yeah. <laughs> I want fried chicken on a biscuit with gravy on it. <laughs> yeah. I'll have the quarters over my Grammy's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the toll for her to cross the river sticks. <laughs> All right, so uh, he makes his way out to California and fucking get this, baby. <laughs> what a, fucking a fresh out of broadcasting school, dude. <laughs> Go on. Hang on, I got something very important to tell you. I got to drink a bottle of water before I do it, though. <laughs> <laughs> would you would you like me speaking with with a dry whistle? Uh, <laughs> How yeah. wet do you want my whistle? I'll wet it even more. You're drooling right now, so I think you <laughs> overdid it. <laughs> Damn. 
All right, so um, just building suspense. <laughs> so he moves out to California, and he takes up work as a painter. Who do you believe that he ends up getting work for as a painter in California in 1992, John Boy? The Church of Satan fella. Ooh. Nope. Nicole Brown Simpson. What? Yep. Like he paint he paints art or he paints houses. Paints houses. He didn't paint the house we went to. Could have. Now get this too. Get the fuck out of here. That's fucking crazy. And this is years before. Yeah. So the murder happened in 1994 of Nicole. Yeah. This is 1992 where he makes her acquaintance. Now he claims after he's arrested for all the awful shit that he did, he claims that he's the one that killed her. And his brother Clay backs up that claim. He said he was contracted by OJ to kill his ex-wife. What? Yep. Was he ever like investigated? They never tied him to anything. There's, there, yeah. I mean, OJ clearly killed this woman. I mean, maybe it was a painter's glove that was left behind. <laughs> right, Mike. I don't think I've ever heard you say those words before. What? You said OJ clearly killed this woman. Oh my God! Did I say that out yeah, loud? We, we got him, ladies and gentlemen. We got him. <laughs> <laughs> the experiment Come is on over. In. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the experiment is over. Am I getting juiced right now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where's he at? <laughs> He's in the tomb. Your family's outside with balloons right now. They're so happy for uh, him. <laughs> oh, I'm about to be in the tomb. <laughs> Every week they're out there just waiting for him to finally admit it. <laughs> that uh, that abandoned house across the street, it's not abandoned. It's filled with f- fucking confetti and FBI <laughs> <laughs> agents. <laughs> wow. Female body inspectors. <laughs> All right, so in 1993... He commits a heinous crime. So he goes back to Kentucky, right? I'm sorry. He's in Ohio, and uh, he he's down on his luck, and his mother's telling an old friend of hers that her son's back in town. He's down on his luck. He's trying to get himself going again. So this older guy named Mark Peters says, look, he can come stay with me at my cabin until he gets back on his feet. He can help out around, do what he can, and I'd be happy to take him in. Mm-hmm. You know what I say about both fish and visitors? What you be saying about them? After three days, we have to eat them. Mm-hmm. Ooh. They start stinking, Jake. You know when that thing be stinking? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, man. Is it really three days? Did I get that right? I think you did. Okay. Yeah. So he overstays his welcome, but Mark Peters is so nice of a guy that he can't just flat out ask him to leave. Unfortunately, Mark Peters is lured to Glenn Edward Rogers' family cabin in Kentucky, and there he's killed. <sighs> Because Mark Peters' family doesn't hear from him. They go to check out his cabin. He's nowhere to be found. And uh, police are kind of like on the trail. They they have an idea of where, you know, these two might have been going. They know that fucking Glenn was staying with him. So they're on the trail right now. And Glenn is actually arrested in California shortly thereafter using Mark Peters' son's ID. Whoa. Yeah. But, however, he's not officially connected to the murder yet. So they don't know that he's a part of that murder. Why was he using his son's ID? They look alike? I don't know. Just trying to pass to somebody else. He's, he's enough of a scumbag as to where I think anything you can do that's fucked up or that could potentially fuck somebody over, he would do. I just want to say before it goes completely unnoticed that I really appreciated that uh, inadvertent fish pun you did when you said he lured him to a uh, Oh, cabin. man. After you just made that fish, you know, idiom. Damn, I lost myself in the moment. You were you were really shining there. Even his subconscious makes fucking puns. <laughs> yeah. <man>. yeah. <laughs> Moments are like your kids. Sometimes you lose them. <laughs> but you probably should hang out to everyone that you can. I've always said that, Jake. <laughs> you, get them every, you get them back every weekend, every other weekend. Mm-hmm. <coughs> I forgot my daughter in America's Best one time. I don't even know what kind of story that is. <laughs> But it sounds like you're not one of America's best fathers. Um, what do they sell there? Better dad. <laughs> Did you get in the car and drive away before you realized it? Yeah, it was dad's warehouse. Their slogan is, hey, you're going to like your new dad. <laughs> no, what had happened was I was out of contacts. So I had to go for a goddamn exam. So I was in there for like a fucking hour. My wife was with me. I had my middle daughter, Olivia, with me. And at a certain point, my wife's like, I'm going out to the fucking car. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to buy my contacts and I'll be right out. 
I finally got my peepers back in. I'm like, by God, I could finally see again. So um, I scan the room, don't recognize a single soul. <laughs> Who's this little girl that I have with me? <laughs> yeah. So I, I fucking bolt out of America's Best, and I could see my wife from my car because I parked close enough to the stores to where, you know, it's it's within eyesight. Mm. With, now that I got my contacts and everything's within eyesight, baby. So I'm, I'm strutting toward the car, and my wife's, like, pointing behind me. And I'm like, <laughs> what? And she's saying, turn around. And I turn around, and I, I can see my daughter, Olivia, like, barely able to look, alo- look above the pane of glass on the door. Oh, my God. <laughs> So I got her ass. <laughs> yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. I I made it maybe ten paces outside of the store. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're safe. Thanks, Jake. You're absolved. Thank you. Maybe America's second best, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So September twenty eighth, nineteen ninety five. This little killing ass is still killing. Damn, Jake. What do you think he does to this poor woman he comes across? Oh no, that should be a rap name. This- little killing ass. Yeah, rap names have been getting like dumber mm-hmm. and dumber. Lil Killin' Ass is like back That is a good one, cool. yeah. Yeah, I like that yeah. one. Yeah, a good rap duo, of Dumber and Dumber. Dumber and Dumber? Oh, I don't get it either. Is he talking about us, John? I fucking hope no, not. You fucking bunch of Lloyd Christmases over here. It's it funny in. you bring him up because uh, Glenn Edward Rogers looks like fucking Harry. No, He's he got the Harry know. haircut. I thought of Lloyd Christmas today looking at this fucker's haircut. Wow. You're good, Jake. Thank you. Jake, you are so good. You're getting good. <laughs> Tell him how good he is. Tell him how good he is, John. You're getting so good. Oh, Oh, buddy, you're getting so good. You know who's not good? Our flying... Our our flying... (laughs) Uh -uh. Glenn Rogers is killing this poor lady named Sandra Gallagher. He strangles her and he sets her on fire in the car. Jesus Christ. Another fucking brother. Fire fella. It must have... It must have... Caught fire. This method of killing. Because so many people were doing it that we've oh, covered man. recently. Yeah. He is running low on pun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that pun went down in flames. Yeah, pun me up, baby. <laughs> they should, you know how they have AED machines? Yeah. They should have PUN machines. <laughs> you could just shock them oh, back God. into me. Oh, my God. He hasn't made a single fucking milk pun in this, yeah. in this cow farm. Oh, <laughs> uh, probably a week later, he kills another woman named Linda Price. Goes back to her apartment. She's found stabbed to death in her bathtub, Jake. Damn. Mm-hmm. God, it sucks that we have to go back from making a joke, too. And then the woman was stabbed to death. It's like, <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. I was having such a good time All just a murder. second ago talking about puns. So that was in Mississippi. At this point, he's got to get the fuck out of Dodge. So he he's heads over to Florida. This motherfucker is getting his ass around. Traveling, man. That's why he's called the cross-country killer. You thought it was cross-country because he was a little running ass? I thought it was because of his ski size. <laughs> that would be funny if he only killed on skis. Mm-hmm. I can't yeah. wait to talk about the Gwyneth Paltrow trial when we're done. Man, that was tough to get out. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> you don't want my whistle wet. You don't want. Now my look whistle? at me. Look at him. You you wet that whistle. He Mike. wetting it up. Oh, he's wetting it. He wetting it up to spit it everywhere. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta invest in some ponchos. <laughs> <laughs> I got a freak size poncho for you, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the ass cut out. <laughs> it's a full body poncho. It's a painter's tarp. That's what <laughs> so he heads down to Florida and uh, he stabs a woman to death in a motel and leaves her in the tub, a woman by the name of Tina Cribs. He's murdering people with some cool names. Mm-hmm. I'll give him that. What do you think about the name Awful. Andy Sutton? Kills her too. Oh, man. Yeah. Andy is a lady? Yes. With an I at the uh, end? A Y, baby. A Y? Why? I don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> Not even her parents. Mm mm. Her parents forgot. Now, after this one, uh, he's found four days later. He's on the run. He goes to his uh, family's place in Kentucky. Okay. He goes there and he tells his family what kind of trouble he's in, John. And wh- they're tired of his shit. They're like, look, we got to fucking turn this fucker in. So they notify the police. This is actually very exciting because you could see the police chase caught by the news if you go on youtube you can look up the fucking glenn edward rogers police chase is this pre-oj still uh post oj and how was he getting around the country was he driving everywhere he had a ford fiesta this time (laughs) Ford, which i believe was tina cribs's car okay okay he stole that after he killed her and drove it i think so yeah but you can see this like you can see the cops setting up it's very dramatic 
And uh, naturally, they don't set it up very efficiently, so he blows right past <laughs> the police roadblock. Him the finger. And one of the cops fires at the uh, the rear re- real rear wheel <laughs> with a shotgun. Did you see what his face did? When <laughs> I he did saw that. I was <laughs> Oh, nervous. my God. Where's the cat? <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, where's the AED machine in here? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. They, they fired at the rear wheel. Yep. And they stopped the vehicle. They blew that out, and eventually, like, he crashed off the side of the road. Mm-hmm. It's very dramatic. You can watch this footage and you see them pulling him out of the car. And as they're pulling him out of the car and arresting him, uh, the news guy on the scene is like asking him questions and he starts fighting with the news guy <laughs> as he's being led away to the police car. Dude. Was he yelling, was he yelling at him? Just, just yeah, screaming at him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I fucking do this. Like that kind of shit. <laughs> what was he yelling? What was he saying, Mike? Tell me some, some of those words he was saying. This dick ain't on the run, bitch. <laughs> Guy was horny to the very yeah. end. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's what he was Surprised saying, he didn't try running, you know? Or was he, like, injured that way? That's why he stayed in the vehicle. I don't know, man. I think if you're in a Ford Fiesta with a blown-out tire, baby, you're really limited. Yeah, and party time's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a fucking a Ford Siesta now, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, Jack. Nap time. Mm-hmm. We're choking your ass out. <laughs> Papa <and ghoul. laughs> <laughs> That's IJJ Italian Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they get his ass, and he claims that he killed over 70 people. No way. They're never right? able to substantiate that. Definitely I'm inflating to, this. Yeah, I'm starting to yeah think. inflated numbers. Although, I, like I like we talked about last episode, sometimes they do be inflating shit, I think, just to be mm-hmm. braggadocious. Yeah. Braggadocious. And he also claimed Nicole Brown Simpson. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty. That's... Yep. Was he claiming them, um, like, little by little to try to get something out of investigators in jail, like a toaster? I think so. Or... Yeah, he and his brothers, they bo- his brother both seemed like scam artists. And uh, OJ's hot at the time. So this was 95, so OJ got got in 94. So you know he's not too far off. This is maybe a year removed from that. And right now the OJ trial is in full swing, Jake. Wow. Judge Ito's just deliberating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's behind bars just masturbating. He's Judge Beto. <laughs> He's jerking off, John. I've never had a snack that ends in Edo. That goes for Dorito, Cheeto, Frito, Judge Edo. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of that joke, and I love it. That's, That's bars, baby. And it's going to be my new that is fucking opener when I jump off a bridge. Bars. <laughs> so he was uh, sentenced to death for Sandra Gallagher uh, for her murder, the lady that he strangled and burned to death in her car. And that was the only one he got? That's the only one he got a death sentence for. Wow. Yep. Was he charged for any of the other murders? Yeah, he was charged for murders in California as well. And he's connected specifically to a lot of these. Yes. Yeah. He is. But claims right. way more. And he was found guilty uh, for uh, at least one murder in California, but he's currently residing in Florida State Prison in Rayford, Florida, which is between Jacksonville and Gainesville. And does he have a death date? How do they do that? He doesn't. I think most guys that end up going to death row, they never make it off. Oh, dude, I forgot to add something funny about the uh, the last guy we covered. I wish I could go back on. But I can't. It's gone. Give it, give it to us now, Mike. Carol Cole. Um, From last when, week's episode. Yes. When he was up, it seemed like his, his, his death sentence was really getting expedited. So much so that three of his fellow prisoners filed an appeal on behalf because they felt as though, like, they were moving so quickly that they were going to start moving quickly on their cases, so they filed to keep him alive. Jesus Christ. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's never that it's getting sped up. Right. It's always getting delayed. <clears throat> mm-hmm. They really must have wanted that motherfucker dead because of his woman's name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, Glenn Rogers, <laughs> I'll give him this. Like, He looks like he's having a good time in jail. You ever yeah. see pictures of guys that after they get caught for heinous shit, they look like jail is where they're supposed to be? Mm-hmm. Yeah. like He's one of those guys. Relief in their yeah. eyes. He's yeah. got it in his eyes. What do you see in my eyes, Jake, when you uh, look at me? A lot of pain. Oh. A lot of pain, Mike. We're going to work through it. I don't want to. I see beauty and kindness. Whoa. Whoa. Y'all Where's looking it? the same eyes. Let me take my contacts out <laughs> and leave my daughter in the store. That's <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> just cat contacts. <laughs> Ooh, I haven't been the Hot Topic in a while. <laughs> I wonder if you can get prescription cat <laughs> eyes. Do hot Topic makeovers. <laughs> I think you can. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> yeah. That'd be sweet. Everybody gets goffed out. Yeah. Ooh. We should do a goth. I like that term, baby. <laughs> it was weird. Hot Topic went from 
grade school, I would go and get like patches for my backpack. Yeah. I would always get shit. And then in high school, I was like actually getting CDs there because they sold like Taking Back Sunday CDs mm -hmm. and merch of emo shit. But then it was always, it always had the goth area. Yeah. But now Hot Topic is basically just the same as Spencer's Gifts, yep. like Rick and Morty everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's probably owned by the same company. Yeah. But I feel like you, you don't go to Hot Topic and get like whatever band you like in high school. Now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's further back in the store. Maybe I got to go further in Hot Topic. Maybe I got to go more often. You got to go deeper. <laughs> He is. <laughs> Man, I was thought it was fucked up how you go into a Spencer's Gifts and the deeper you went back to the store, you really got into a twisted mind of Mr. Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth, though. The yeah. deepest, darkest recesses. Oh, my God, dude. I'm yeah. sitting there at the fucking posters sitting at all the girls mm -hmm. like with their butts hanging off the truck. Yeah, the further back you go, the, the more you think poster. you're going to get in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, that is great. And then you, I remember you just look at the posters and then slowly glance over your shoulder at all the stuff you're not supposed to. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh my God, a Family Guy vibrator. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're, you're Meanwhile, fucking... Meanwhile, you're covered in black lights and just you're just excreting fucking <laughs> semen. <laughs> just being caught in the moment. Yeah, that's the mind of Spencer B. Spencer, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew his middle initial. Yeah. Sp stands for bad. Spencer Spencer, though. Yeah. Spencer, bad Spencer. <laughs> Damn, I love them all. I gotta get them all this weekend. Oh, love the mall. Yeah, was I, I mumbling? Love the mall. I love a mall. I thought you meant the like... mall. I love them all. Yeah, I think all three things that you could have understood were correct. I'll tell you one thing about malls. I fucking hate them. However, <gasps> why? I just, I just hate being in them. I used to love them. The last, the last mall that I truly loved. There's an emotional component to it. The reason why I loved it is because. My wife lived right by it, and I started getting pussy from my wife there. Behind the mall pussy. That shit be wet, dude. I took her to see a damn movie. <laughs> I think it was. I think we were dating like a, a week, and I took my wife to see a movie. Damn. It was. A, it, they used them all in a Marky Mark movie. Normal. Oh, I know which one. Was it the Love of Bones? Bones? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. McDade Mall. Why is it gone? Um. Probably a lot of it, no, it's still there. It's just it's not a Amazon. mall anymore. Com. They repurposed they it to like fucking individual mm. stores. One of it's a up. beer store. One yeah. of it's a gym. You don't go inside Dollar anymore. Store. No, you can't walk. Just inside. the anchor mall or anchor stores are yeah. repurposed. There's right, one yeah. spot. There's one spot where you can walk in, but it's like very like you feel like you're behind the counter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I should get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah, a lot of good memories there. As a child, I saw Encino Man there. Ah, that was a really good movie. I liked that one a lot. Hell yeah. What's your favorite mall? <laughs> What's your favorite movie? My favorite mall, I guess it's got to be my home mall, Christiana. Yeah, it's a nice one. Mm -hmm. But now I'm a Cherry Hill man because of its proximity. KOP growing up was always the, hopefully you get there once a year, fucking too big mall. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It's actually the Glendale Galleria. I don't know why it took me so long to get there. Is that where we That's went? my mall, baby. Where did we go? That's where you park to go to the Americana. Okay. But you go to the Galleria on the way. <laughs> oh, that's where we ate. We went to both. We, we we ate all those beignets. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. God, they were so good. That's the Americana. It's Americana, I know, baby. Okay. Love as long as you know, As long as you know where you're parking for free, baby. Isn't that where you fed me that dog shit in and out? Damn. Jake, what's your favorite mall before uh, I lose my fucking cool man? <laughs> buddy. <laughs> Granite Run was probably my that was a good favorite. one, yeah. But the yeah, one good one. I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> but Tri State Mall. I was going to say, did Ooh, you go there? That was a real was, dirt ball paradise. I was there yeah. All the time. That is the mall from the I end had, of Mall Rats had, where the lady has a fucking third nipple on her yep. tit. Yeah, I had so much stuff on layaway in that Kmart that I never mm. got. Damn, dude. Yeah, they, aren't they just tearing that down now? I don't know if they're tearing it down, are they? You should go and try to get like a brick from it or something. <laughs> I should. <laughs> I 100% should. See if there's a chair from They didn't the... even have a food court. That's what drove me nuts. They had like mm. one little spot where you can get pretzels and Slurpees. But it was like 
Kmart, and then you just walk over to Value City, and like that was yeah. There wasn't much as far as small stores in between. Right? Yeah, didn't they have a movie theater there? They did. They did at some yeah, point. Yeah, a long time ago, but it's I, I could barely remember it. Man, I miss those mall movie theaters, man. There was yeah, I know they were the best. They dude. were cool. What, the one in Christiana ruled. Yeah, just walking through the mall. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, let's see a movie. That was the best. Miss it. Miss those days. Do you think you could buy underwear that smells like a movie theater? You mean, would I feel okay with it when I got home and smelled it? Or do you think that they sell the product that you're dreaming of? When you took the drawers off of me, if that was the first thing that hit your senses. Popcorn and, uh, and soda. Pop boner. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun for your grandkids to call you that. <laughs> pop We're going over Pop Boner's house. Pop boner's house. <laughs> Wait, Papa Boner? <laughs> <laughs> You're getting so big. <laughs> Dude, I used to fucking hate when my grandfather asked if I had a girlfriend. Oh, my God. I should have told him Why? I had a spite. <laughs> I was so embarrassed, man. Yeah, that is a rough thing to do to a little kid. You got a girlfriend yet? Oh, oh you fucking one of those guys. Yeah. I should fuck my wife on his grave now. <laughs> you should. Mm -hmm. You should do that. Uh, dude, I, I, I shouldn't admit this. I visited my grandfather, my namesake, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm the third. Uh, and, uh, he would always shake my hand. He would squeeze your hand every time you'd see him, Ooh. show you what a fucking man handshake is. And he'd be like, you play football. And I fucking, I did until he died, oh. uh, which was like seventh grade. So I go visit his grave probably the first time ever in my life, which is terrible. Like since the burial. I don't know. And I was like, oh, I'll bring my one boy. Cause we all have the name. You know what I mean? Like show him the grave. And then I broke a statue on the grave. <gasps> Did you rip his fucking hand off. I ripped the head off. <gasps> Why? Not on purpose. Like I, I slightly touched it, and I swear to God, like I'm John, like that, and the thing crumbled. It looks like it may have fell off before, and like somebody tried to place it back up. Mm -hmm. But somebody put some gum on it. But yeah, so I knocked off the head of Mother Mary on my pup ups tombstone Ooh. and then I picked it up and I was like trying to put, it, and it wouldn't stay still, so I just like left it on the top. So, <laughs> so I think you're a, supposed to bury it if if you do that. Is it really? Yeah, I just want you to look like you're digging up your pup up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got one. We got a live one. <laughs> Jeez, I was I was like, oh my god, I should have buried the head. I would have. Went. <laughs> yeah. Damn, was, Jake. It's fucking awful. You've always been a Satanist, haven't you? <laughs> That one documentary I told you about, like, a, two years ago that I watched was very convincing on Satanism. Okay. I don't remember that. It, it was something that came out, I think it was on Hulu. Do you guys remember that? There was, like, a whole thing about the religion itself. Sounds like it should have been on Bulu. <laughs> very spooky. You okay, Mike? <laughs> that is, I don't know if it's the same episode, but it's two boo puns yeah. in one night. For well, sure. I was speaking about a boo pun previously. previously. <laughs> this is an in the moment boo pun. <laughs> the other one was a pre. <laughs> so I think you could say that I'm cashing in my boo puns right now. Oh, no. I don't want, it. We got I don't want him to say that. We have a tally in the. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, uh, he's drooling at the side of his mouth again. Uh, one funny thing I want to add about our friend Glenn Rogers, because before we keep talking about malls and pop pops, <laughs> is uh, one of the uh, the they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> one of the uh, resources I used to gain information for him kept multiple times referring to him as being six points above retardation, which is also the title of my new autobiography. <laughs> He was a 76 man. Uh, I do not want to help you with that audiobook. <laughs> you never told us that he was he was dumb this whole time. I don't listen. When you see him, I've said they're beautiful eyes. They're also dumb eyes. I used to work with a guy, my my buddy Joe. But the Casanova thing was a joke. This guy was an ugly retard. I don't listen. I I know most people won't view him as ugly, but he's a big burly man who was probably hot for like the 70s. Okay. You know, it's like all you needed was a beard and a pair of black jeans to get ants wet in the seventies. <laughs> not like more now. of a mustache, but not like now. Describe been uh, Magnum PI. What do you think ants need nowadays? What, what do they need, Mike? I don't know. I I don't know. Uh, I truly don't know. Um, they probably get wet for like Timothy Chalamet or something. Mm. 
I know. Little, little, little weak boys, boys little um, busting haircut boys. <laughs> they flipped the script. They went. To they the probably l- flipped the script on him, and they like a little milky soft boy. <laughs> they see those rub te- them up. <laughs> they see those teacher stories. They're like, why can't I ha- enjoy this? Mm. Yeah, I could see that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, Phil said, if you guys are listening right now, tell us what ants want these days. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like and subscribe yeah. and tell us about your aunt's wants that's, and needs in the comments, I think, please. Actually, I think that's a new Mel Gibson movie coming out. I will say this. I what had an a, aunt wants? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what an aunt wants? What an aunt needs? I'll tell you what, it's not an uncle. I had a very creepy aunt, and uh, one of the reasons why she was creepy, one of the, on the smaller end of the spectrum as to why she was creepy, was that uh, one day we were watching television together, and a Chuck Norris movie came on. And she said that he could put his boots on her bed any day. My God. Does that mean have sex with your shoes on? Or does that mean... (laughs) Jump on her bed. (laughs) (laughs) Chuck Norris, get down from there. You're making me wet. (laughs) Little boy walks in. He's like, Walker told me I have AIDS. (laughs) (laughs) Now I got to tell you that you have AIDS. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, there was a uh, there was a school or a parish in Upper Darby, Pennsylvania, where I grew up, called St. Lawrence. And one of the big creepy news stories of my childhood was that one day Satanists had cut off the head and the hands of a Jesus statue at St. Lawrence. Um, was there any truth yeah. to that, or was it just a little neighborhood? Shit? I don't know. There were a lot of like hammerheads. You ever hear about them? No. They were like yeah. metal kids. People no. assumed it was local hammerheads who did it. <laughs> and one of the creepier aspects of this was it didn't get fixed right away because I imagine it cost a lot of money to get these fucking, what are they made out of? These fucking ivory statues of these fucking... Of Jesus? I think yeah. they're made of bread. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bakery was closed until Monday. <laughs> but the the head and the hands were missing, so for the longest time they just draped a, sh- a weighted sheet over it. So it was just like a ghost? You just saw this, Yeah. <laughs> No head. You just saw this with a fucking white tarp over it. Jesus it just, uh, Christ. Cut little eyes on it. <laughs> fucking Jesus Christ. Halloween cannot come soon enough. That's awesome. Yeah, well, their their uh, haunted house was pretty good that year. <laughs> Better I, than the nativity dude, scene. Ironically, I went with the same creepy aunt. I went to a haunted house, which was just a residence. Yeah. They created most of their house into a haunted house mm-hmm. that wow. people could just come through. I don't yeah. think we even had to pay. Yeah, that's not uncommon. I remember one of those in my friend's neighborhood growing up. Very spooky. Going through yeah. the, their actual house? house? Yeah, you their house, up house in the backyard. Like you, they snake you through, like the living room would probably, like the haunted houses in Universal. Yeah. It's just a small room that's made into a little snake thing. And then yeah. there's a turn here, a scary fellow there. Oh my God, the neighborhood pedophile here. <laughs> That kind of thing. Damn. It's spooky stuff, Jake. That's that's very spooky to me. I'm gonna do something spooky to you this Halloween. Uh, I don't like that. I gotta start planning it now. To him, uh, he needs to be spooked. Look at him. Mm-hmm. Uh, come on, man. He's too comfortable. He is. He spooked me. I'm I'm down and out. You're way too good. I think we should just take him outside and beat his ass tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what should we? Let's beat him with something funny. Let's beat him with like licorice ropes. Yeah. You still got your licorice ropes down? No, we got to go get more. <laughs> All right, Jake, you stay here for a little while. <laughs> now, what did you use the, um, uh, the what? iPhone cords? All right, those will work. Yeah, that'll hurt. Son of a that'll get us started. Then I'll rock your fucking body with my fists. <laughs> <laughs> How you know that's not going to charge me up, John? Mm. You absorb it all like that, uh, like Kevin Bacon in X Men First Class. Ooh, all I heard was make me hungry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Uh, spooky movie is uh, what's that Kevin Bacon movie where he's his house is haunted? Stir of Echoes. Yeah, that's yeah, a fucking scary ass movie, one man. Me up. Remember when he was the Invisible Man and you could see his ween? I do not remember. Ooh, Hollow oh, man. Big old flopper. Yeah, Hollow oh, Man. Yeah, man. Look at me. I fucking. You say bacon, I know it. You gotta get hog <laughs> loose. Hog loose. <laughs> Bro's got a flopper, dude. I heard it was all Natch, too. <sighs> they had, like, the little CGI balls on, yeah. on his dick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, got, I got to see this thing. Let's, let's watch it. He's very together. sexually yeah. aggressive in that movie. <laughs> you right? guys doing the next yeah. two hours. <laughs> yeah, he's really going for it. Yeah. Really growing for it. 
Mm, really showing for it, actually. <laughs> if it grows any more than that, I have got to see a doctor. <laughs> I've got to see Jesus this now. I actually argued in defense of Tom Hardy's penis online once. Remember when it was revealed he was like on like a paddle boat or something? Once seems like a lie. <laughs> seems like you say no, once it was. to let people yeah. know that Actually, it wasn't five times. I was, uh, what do they call it when you're like indirectly addressing somebody online subtweeting? Is that what that is? Okay. It, this was kind of that, but the Facebook version of that. But this one lady in particular that I went to school with was like, that's all he's got. So I was just like, look. He's a very handsome guy. He's got the penis that God gave him. I was like, how big do you need these fucking things? Look at you coming to the defense. <laughs> Did she respond to you? No. That's why you are the true light switch king. Thank you, Jake. Yeah, coming right to the aid of Thank those you. who need you. Yeah. They flip it off. I flip it right back. On, baby. <laughs> I bring I bring light and a light switch to a dark world. <laughs> Little dings all across the nation are praying to you right now. Oh, that's very sweet it. of you. Yeah. Thank you. Man, I would... I, I, just so you know, I hope you're not expecting human penis. This is a hollow man's penis, if I recall yes. correctly. I'm fine with that. Yeah. It's an invisible penis. It, it is like... It's uh, fucking huge. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't say it, but yeah. it's huge. It's so big. It's exactly how I used to describe my penis. Yeah, I mean like... Invisible. Which is also <laughs> invisible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, big dick is like, you don't need to enjoy it to appreciate it. You know, big dick is like seeing a potato salad without raisins in it. It's like I'm not going to eat any, but I'm glad it doesn't have it in there. I, that's the have best. what in there? Raisins. In his penis? I'm saying that I'm not going to enjoy the penis, I but I can appreciate it. I, what it is. I follow as much as I want to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Thank you for watching the little stinkers. <laughs> if you've been watching this on Patreon, we appreciate your support. Thank you for making this possible. If you're not a patron yet, consider going to patreon.com slash little stinkers. That's L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. If you're a patron of little stinkers, it's four bucks a month or 40 bucks for the year. You get every episode a week early. You get extra episodes every month. You get our live AMA, which is a Patreon exclusive. You get any sketches we do. We're putting up more. We put one up, the Casey Anthony one up this month. We're putting uh, an OJ one up in a couple weeks. And then in May, we got our big Eileen Warnos one. Oh, I and can't wait. I can't wait to see. I can't wait for you to see these two in their element in that. And on top of that, too, we also do book club meetings. And, uh, oh, I forgot to mention this the last episode. I, this past week, I, Michael Rainey, conducted an, ep conducted an interview with the one, the only Miss Gladys. What? I did. No way. She was kind enough to speak oh to me. God. How did you get her? I, the stars aligned while she was in space. Truly, the planets actually did align. Did yeah, that's how he was looking at it. Yeah, and we're going to be dropping that soon too. I sh I think by this weekend, by the time you see this episode, maybe yeah, the Miss Gladys interview will be out. So that's going to be Patreon exclusive as well. All tons of dumb shit that we got coming down the pike, pr primarily for patrons. Like behind the scenes, how was she? Was she nice? Lovely lady. Oh, okay, just lovely as the Dickens. She was all sass and vinegar. So I interviewed Miss Gladys primarily about her time working for the Murdoch family in South Carolina. But then also, I utilized all the questions that listeners of our patrons submitted that wanted to learn more about her personal life. And boy, okay. was she forthcoming. Wow. I can't wait to hear this. Yeah. So you're going to get to see that just for patrons. And uh, yeah, thank you for those of you that are patrons. And for those of you that are thinking about it, make the jump. Do it, baby. Do it. Come have Do fun it. with us. We're having a fucking once fun Once we get to 2,000, they're throwing me back in. That's right. To a mm. foam pit. So once we hit 2,000 patrons, up. Jake's going to face his fears, and he's going to get back in the foam pit, and he cannot get out until we hit 2,010 patrons. I am terrified about this. Mm -hmm. You're going to do well. Yeah. We will not let you drown in foam. Thank you. But we may have to pay for them to stay open after hours. <laughs> <laughs> but all thanks to your support, that's possible. Guys, you want to promote anything before we go? Uh, thank you guys for listening. Thanks for being patrons. Thanks for watching on YouTube, whatever you freaking do. Thank you. Uh, follow me at Johnny Delco on Twitter and Instagram. Got a lot of shows coming up, so I'll be posting them on my Instagram. Follow me there. Love you. I have a, uh, a thing on YouTube, a special, if you will. Boy, is it special. Uh, just write in Jake and a soft one. It'll show up. Just give it a thumbs oh. up. Oh. Write a comment. Just say, oh, I was here. Thumb it. Yeah. Let's get that algorithm going. I get eight more views. Thank you. 
Thank you to everybody that's bought my book, On Perks. If you go to onperks.com, that's O-N-P-E-R-C-S.com, you can get my book. It's available in audiobook version, ebook version, and print copy. I My goal is to sell 5,000 copies. I've sold over 3,000 so far. I'm going to get there thanks to your support. And if you're on the fence about it, I promise you it will be the dumbest and funniest thing you read all fucking year. It is fucking funny. Thank so you. So goddamn funny. It, Thank you. It's not as dumb as he says. It's actually very funny. <laughs> Thank you. It's so dumb that it goes into genius territory. Yeah. Oh, it maybe, inverts. maybe that's what. It's like digging to China. Like you did yeah. it. Well, you got a lot of digging experience, so. How far did you get to China in digging your grandfather up? <laughs> I didn't actually do it. I'm going to do it, though, because John said I has to, have to. Mm-hmm. To appease the souls. Yeah, to appease the souls. <laughs> I have to bury the head. That head is long gone. What'd you do with it? I left it on top of the thing, but some, you know somebody. A crow. A crow probably took mm-hmm. it. Probably a bad crow's crow. nest. Mm-hmm. Or maybe one of the hammerheads in the neighborhood probably took it. Mm-hmm. They are afoot. Those nasty hammerheads. Wait, the heads are a foot? All right. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Later. (laughs)